Just a couple bad weather fans representing New York Talking all things sports, man what could go wrong? We got Alex who's a fan of the Knicks and Mike of the Nets The yin yang of the tri-state place your bets On the Yankees, Giants, Mets or Jets Yeah you should listen if this sparking your interest If you made a vow to your team don't break it Bad weather fans is the relation, relation, relation. That's right, this is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 108. Mike Baseglia, Alex Benesowitz, and a wild week for both the Nets and the Knicks. The Nets have some historic performances from Kyrie Irving. The Knicks get a win tonight versus the Portland Trailblazers. Nets lose a heartbreaker, and I mean heartbreaker, versus the Dallas Mavericks. I will point out, because I'm going to make myself feel better, and all the Net fans listening... Since we've been doing bad weather fans for the past two years, the Knicks have never defeated the Nets. So let's just yeah. I mean, that's a good way to deflect. Oh, I'm good, Mike. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. No, that's a good way to deflect. Deflect. I mean, Dinwiddie hits the game winner. I mean, I can't say that I didn't break out laughing. I, I, when Luca drove in, I thought for sure he's going to shoot, and then he went and he like you know took himself out of control, and he uh, and it was like it didn't crazy shot. It didn't bother you. That didn't would he hit the shot? How much you dislike him? So you're because I no know you, no. You told me it, how it was. It was you funny to you me don't think because he's very of the good Nets. and all that stuff, right? I never said I didn't say I don't think he's very good. I said you didn't I didn't say it was want worth him. the co- wasn't worth the. Con- I didn't want to take the risk post knee injury, no. Right. But I also it was more, and I also admitted it. It was more because I just didn't like him because right. of the way he acted as part of the culture nets, the head of the culture nets, and mocking the Knicks after the Porzingis trade. And then it's funny he gets traded for Porzingis, it's and that's out, hilarious. For sure. That's for sure. Yeah, no, he's a good player. I just don't like him. You know, that's all. But it's not like because I think he sucks. I just don't like him. You know, and um, I just think I just I just bust out laughing. That was an incredible shot by Durant to, <laughs> to go up first. Durant, that, you know, what's funny. You know, it's funny about that shot, yeah. Alex. And I yeah. and I mean this like he makes that. It's I nothing. expect yeah, I know, I ma- I like as a, as a net fan. Now, at this point, you expect him to make that shot and right. then you're excited about it. But it, it's not when he misses. You're like, what the fuck? It's <laughs> not that as exciting. It's more just like part routine with it. And I mm-hmm. I mean that because he's that good. He makes these shots all the time and take that right. for granted but yeah dim dim when he made the shot and kudos to the mavs i mean they came into brooklyn they got the win no seth curry hurt um you know i mean that's the thing with the nets alex and we'll talk about the knicks they got a win versus the blazers and whatever Thibodeau yeah. come back but i mean that's the thing with the nets alex let's be real like if Kyrie plays they can win a championship if he's not there they can't i don't even care about ben simmons irrelevant <laughs> seriously he's not there if I know Kyrie's- it's just funny because especially today it's funny because Dinwiddie is the one of the players you traded for Harden and then now and now you traded no, Harden well, for Simmons no, Dinwiddie you don't even was- care if Simmons there. No, that's not true Dinwiddie was a free agent he left a free agent I'm sorry but you didn't bring him back because you needed the space for sure. the other players right but, so but, but, I'm sorry I messed that up you're right no, I'm fine. thinking Levert my bad it's fine but but, but I'm yeah. just saying if if Kyrie is with Durant I'm mm-hmm. not saying they can they'll win the championship definitely not and you know me but if Durant and Kyrie are together, there's a chance. There's Conference a chance. Finals, at least. Conference there, finals. There is. Right, yeah. What, yeah. They, the Nets with Kyrie and Durant could lose in the first round. They could win a title. And mm-hmm. it could be anywhere in between. But at least it's a chance. So when you hope. see him hope. go out yes. and put yeah. a 60 number on the Magic, and like mm-hmm. he's not even try. I mean, just incredible. And then you come home and they struggle versus, like they should have beat Dallas. They blew the lead. And you go, well, if Kyrie Irving's there, they probably that you know, I mean, real that probably doesn't happen. It's it's really hard because as a Nets fan, deep inside, you know, put all the bullshit aside. How you feel about the mandate? How you mm-hmm. feel about Kyrie as a human being? If Kyrie and Durant are together, they have a chance, and that's how I felt after I saw the Sixers game. Right? I was like, Alex, when they're together, you see this. Yep, it's great. And then you have tonight where. It's just not enough. And Dinwiddie hits a great shot. Dallas plays great. Can't win. And that's just the frustration of a Nets fan this season is sometimes you see Kyrie, sometimes you don't. And at this point, it's become beyond anybody's expectations of what's going on in the world. And it's it's maddening. And it's it's tough to see. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I can see that, but it's it's just it's crazy to me that you don't even mention mention Ben Simmons because if Ben Simmons is there, do you think they beat the the Mavs? I mean, you don't know because you never well, seen him play. I mean, but it's yeah, like yeah. he's an all star player, and well, you don't have him I there, can't. and he's on the team, and yeah, that's I just know. crazy to me. You know what it, I mean? That, that not, he doesn't even come up anymore. Mentally, he's not part of this team right now. Right. right. Drummond, Drummond is. Curry yes. is Drummond's engaged, very Drum, engaged, and but, I yeah. think Curry would be great to have him with Mills's struggles and just another score for the Nets would be nice. But mm-hmm. at this point, Ben Simmons, in my mind, is not part of this Nets team. Now, for the future, yes, they got to get his head right. He's got to play better. He's got to make shots. Whatever. For this season, I don't assume. I I don't expect to see Ben Simmons. I, to me, it's all about can Kyrie Irving be a full time player. If Ben Simmons comes back at any capacity, that's a bonus where he's giving you more minutes defensively, but he's not he's not part of this core. Uh, it's a bonus. But yeah, it's, it's and really that could change in one game. One game, Simmons comes in as a triple W, like, oh, I love him, get his jersey, oh, let's go. Course. You know what I mean? But yeah, I that's 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 fan. I mean, yeah, it's, I know. it's just yeah, every time you hear about Kyrie, you know, about Simmons, now the epidural in the back, uh, he's he's not coming back like. How, as a Nets fan, can you realistically think Ben Simmons is going to be here this year? You can't. There's no point of continuing to be getting upset about it. You're just like, yeah, it's just gone. He's not here. Just move, don't even think about move him. On. Yeah. Move on mentally. The peace for the future, hopefully for you. And that's the, it. The part yeah. to think about, though, is, is Kyrie Irving. And to me, yeah. that's the piece. Because he scores 60 versus the Magic. He scores 50 versus the Hornets. He scored whatever it was first. The Sixers dominated, but didn't need to be part of that because of the blowout. Score zero he's, against the Mavs. Yeah, he's, exactly. <laughs> he's, Kyrie Irving is that good. Yes. And it's yes. a shame that people don't recognize it. He's, he's a top 10 NBA player and it goes unnoticed because of everything around it. Uh, but you see when he's He there, brings a lot of that on is. himself, though. He brings a lot of that on himself. Like the things that he says and but things nothing, he does. We're not going to get into that. but Nothing with this season, though. No, but it's just the way he the way he is, you know, I I don't want to get too deep into it, but just the just just how he is. And and he's he's let he's demanded trades from two other organizations before the Nets, not even talking about his political or he thinks the earth is flat. I'm talking about like just that, like purely basketball. He's wanted to like, play. People hate players that demand for trades out of especially good situations like the Cavs won a championship and he wanted out because he wanted to get away from LeBron. And then he was with the Celtics and the Celtics go to the Eastern conference finals when he's hurt and he gets jealous. And then all of a sudden he wants to be gone and he never was healthy there. And and now he's with the nets and you know, he, he, the first year he, he, he goes a wall. Right. And then the net or the first, right. You correct me if I'm wrong. Was it the first year that he went a wall when he disappeared? Or was it the second? Oh, that was year? the second year. The first, the first year was he got hurt. Is, right. He is, he's where he wants to be and he's happy. And now mm-hmm. it's stuff that's not in his control. And well, I mean, it is in his it is control. in his control. It it's in his control. We forget that he control. could just get vaccinated he and be playing. Yeah, he we totally just because we know he's not going to. That's why it's but not. But he's not, and it's just yeah. Every teammate of his likes him. They like being with him. At mm-hmm. this point now, it's it's about a different set of circumstances, right? And it's about the mandate. I mean, it really is. It's about the mandate, and if it happens. And if, if you're a sports fan, if you're a Nets fan and you're watching this and you're seeing all of this play out and you're watching this day to day with the mayor, it's it's kind of crazy that you have to, yeah. you know, get on this. Um, and I I I got to know, I, I you know, I, I, I got mad at myself in a little bit because, you know, I went on a, um, a net spaces and there was somebody that covers. um I don't know who he covered, but he he came in and he he brought a grenade into this. Like net fans only care about this because th- they think this mandate's wrong because Kyrie Irving is not playing, and that was no. his point. And net fans got Incorrect. upset. Incorrect. So so so, so two two parts. Use me that. as an example. I think well, Kyrie well, should two play. Two parts for that. If you <laughs> yeah. were a Nets fan and you were upset with that, I would have no problem with that at all. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. yeah, that's annoying. You're a net fan. Um, so that that kind of stewed on me, that mindset there. And then it went into a next spot where it, it, and people were saying like, yeah, it's not right. It's not healthy. It's not safe. At this point, I could not be more of somebody that's into safety and being pro vaccinated. I have a 
18 month old kid and my whole life revolves around him and I make it a point to be safe for him. Right. But I also understand there comes a point when there's a reality. If a business is open and you can go into it and be there, it Maskless. doesn't matter if yeah. you are the client or mm -hmm. if you are the person that is the in the business. It doesn't matter. And it's it's gotten to the point now where it's not about health. It's about politics. And as a net fan and as somebody that wants to see Kyrie, Kyrie Irving play, it's really upsetting. And it's it's gotten to the point where I, I'll say this now, Alex. I don't see him playing full time, and I know that means they can't win a title. Yeah, and that sucks. And, you know, I'm getting a taste of your medicine, but you you know me. I've been saying Kyrie should be playing the whole time, so you can't even put this. But now it's coming into my world as a Mets fan, and especially this year when you get Marte, you got Scherzer, you got all these guys, you're getting excited. And now you find out with on uh, Carton and Roberts that – you know, maybe 30% of the Mets can't even play because they're not vaccinated because it goes for the Mets and the Yankees as well. And and then that that hits my world. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> like, you know, because then you're like trying to rationalize it. These guys play outside. I know the locker rooms inside, but they play outside. And why wasn't it OK last year? And now it's not OK. Like, I don't understand these rules, but I do agree. Um, Evan Roberts talked about this as well. He and, and on Twitter and I think on the show that he thinks that it's going to be done by baseball season, that they're going to lift this mandate by the time they come to New York from spring training. And I think his reasoning was, and I don't know if it is, but for me, it's my reasoning is it affects the Yankees. That's the thing. They're the marquee franchise in the city, the marquee franchise in the world. Possibly right. you can argue that, you know, there's True. no way they're going to torpedo the New York Yankees That's who right. are always in the running for the world series title in his first year as in all, it's, you know, that's that's going to ring some bells. Kyrie Irving is one player. The whole Nets organization yeah. can still play, but he's one player. You know, he's a one dynamic and in, in player. He's like done movies. He's a really famous guy. Sure. But one player on the Brooklyn Nets, and I'm not even belittling them, but you know what it is. It's, no. it's not the same as the New York fucking Yankees. And I'm not even talking about the Mets. Like, I, I want to talk about the Mets because that affects me because I'm a Met, diehard Mets fan. But it's New York Yankees. <laughs> Yankees, yeah. he's good. They're, they're, this is it's going to go away. There's no way that it doesn't. You know, they talk about Randy Levine is is very in, in in touch with politics. Everybody hates Steve Cohen, so don't worry about him. He is just stay away. Like you know, everybody just seems to hate that guy. So he's not going to be involved. But I'm, I'm telling you that it's there's no way that they they let this go. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there's just just no chance that they no, that I, they're not. No, playing. I know it too because the, when I heard this story and and Craig and Evan talked about it, I was saying, yeah, you know, I. If there's one team in the history of U.S. sports that could mm. help you, Yankees, Cowboys, Steelers, like these are the teams. Now, right. say what you want. I mean, it's the New York Yankees. And if they're going to go after it, that's going to help you. I love the Nets, but I know they don't have that kind of. It's um, not the Lakers, right? It's yeah, not the Lakers, <laughs> the Celtics. Whatever. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, you yeah. know, pick pick the team. Um, right. It is fascinating, though. And then, you know, there's this report like or this, you know, the mayor saying we'll peel it back because it's outside. But if you think about it, too, explain to me if you're on the Yankees. Yes, you play outside, but this is not rec league fucking softball where you just show up. You're like, hey, John. Hey, Tony, you come in your uniform, kids. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're getting hey. stretched in the locker room. You you're in the, the tub. You're, you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, you know, I love cool as light. No, you got to go in there. You got to change like. Yeah. And not to. I'm just being real. Like you can't I be a it. professional baseball player and not show up in the clubhouse and right. not show up in the uniform. Of, yeah, right. You <laughs> just you don't just show up and walk in the parking lot. And you're like, here's my ticket. Let me walk on the field and your, you know, your cleats are hitting. Yeah, it's not like Major yeah, League One where he on. takes the where he takes the bullpen cart. In Major Stupid. League One, he takes the bullpen cart to go to his his ex girlfriend's house. Like that doesn't happen in no, real life. Just, you know, that's not it's not true. Part, the, you know? the bullpen or the clubhouse is part of being a professional ball player. For sure, they don't. For sure. there, there's no you don't you can't just have one without the other. You know, but then it's like, let them wear their masks inside. Like, okay, you know what I mean? Let the, why was that okay before? And that's not okay. And it's just none of it makes any sense. No, no, <laughs> that's the, that's, but that's a yeah. great point. That's the frustrating part is, and I've, I've said this before, I could not be more pro health. But it's Me too. The We're both pro vaccine. Just, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's now just, it's. But I don't politics. judge anybody who doesn't want to get it. It's you know, I don't politics. judge anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Pol it's politics mm -hmm. now. And it's, you know, the mayor fired 1,500 people. And you said this and you pointed this out. He does not want to take the hit because he did that. 
And yes. now he can't go back on it because it's not about health. Kyrie and Kyrie's still there. getting paid millions, so he doesn't really care about him. No, you know it's what I'm about saying? the 1,500 people right. and, the, and the impact that has. and mm -hmm. Real and, families, and, real people who need the money yes, that are probably yes. going broke right now. <laughs> you know. And as, and as selfishly as a Nets fan, when you see uh -huh. that politics is involved in this, you just go, it's never going to happen. And I think because right. Spencer Dinwiddie hit a shot and I'm in a bad mood, it kind of, you know, exa you know exaggerates. Well, it was something... And to transition, something that will never happen. Tibbs will never not be the coach of the Knicks, apparently. You know, they had that story that came out today with uh, Jake Fisher, I think it was, from Bleacher Report. Yeah, Jake, Jake, Jake L. Fisher from Bleacher Report came out and said that the Knicks will, uh, what's this? Despite league-wide speculation, New York is expected to retain Tom Thibodeau as Knicks head coach beyond this 2021-22 season. And, of course, that lit, that you know, shockwaves throughout Knicks fans. All everybody's upset or they're happy. Everybody's acting like, oh, you know, what, what were they supposed to do this year? They didn't have a good team. And meanwhile, before the season, they were like, everybody was saying 45 to 50 wins. Nobody was no. saying they didn't have the talent. I know everybody thought Rose would be healthy, but still, like, that's one player. And it's not like Kyrie Irving. <laughs> like, you know it's not, I mean? it's not so, enough. Every team goes through injuries. And I'm, right, I, I will never right. accept Knicks fans saying, well, we would have won 50 games if. Derek, Derek Rose, Rose and Nerlens Noel were healthy. I'll, like, I'll come say, on. <laughs> if you say that to me, I'll look at you and go, you're a fucking asshole, and you're saying that because you're upset. Don't right. don't ever. No. No. No, um, and, and that's the thing. It's it's Derek Rose was a big part of the team. He sure was. But you know what? Watching every one of these games, and you're in tune with it now as well, you see the things that Tibbs is doing that's that's screwing up the mm -hmm. screwing up the rotations forcing players in positions they shouldn't be in starting shooting guard at point guard, like f not holding Randall to the same level of accountability as somebody like Obi Toppin. Obviously Randall has the, you know, the, the credentials from last year, but at some point you have to, you have to be like, dude, you're, you're playing like shit. You know what I mean? And you can't look players in the eyes and tell them, Hey, it's a, you have to earn your, your spot. And then look at Randall go for two for 15 with 17 turnovers. I'm exaggerating. And then be like, yeah, well, no worries. No big deal. Or Fournier plays like garbage. And he had, he didn't score a point for, for three weeks. And, and I'm joking as, as well, but he didn't score a point. And, and, and then he started the next game or Kemba Walker plays like crap. You bench him at the beginning of the season. And then you bring him back and he scores four only because of COVID and you bring him back and he drops 40 a couple of times, you know, and, and then you, 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 then you don't want to take him out of the lineup when you should. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's just mind numbing decisions throughout this entire season has forced the Knicks to be in this position. They shouldn't be this bad. And saying that he doesn't have the horses is just false, especially things think, especially since every Knicks fan thought they were going to be a playoff team, at least a play in team at the yeah. least at the worst. We we're like, this is a playoff team, a play in team. Excuse yeah, me. that's a not 29 one. to 40. That's a, tr <laughs> that's a tricky one, because mm -hmm. I man. Could the Knicks be better? Could they be in some sort of? Should they be where the Hawks or Hornets are? Yes. Do I? That, I think that's where they should be. Five. Not a four seed. Yeah. Not a four. Five hundred ish. Obviously. No, yeah. the four seeds right now are the Heat. Yeah. Uh, the Celtics Boston. clearly got a lot better. Um. You know the Bulls got a lot better. Yeah. The Cavs got a lot better. Uh. The Bucks are the Bucks, and Sixers. the Sixers yeah. are are there as well. Um. Mm -hmm. But are they the Hornets or the Hawks? Probably. Or yeah. they the Nets? No. Yes. You know, where the Nets yeah, are. Yeah, I guess without league, all the know, shit. Weird... Yeah, all the shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're better than where they are. But, I mean, it's a weird part of them because R.J. Barrett got a lot better. He's improved. He's yep. clearly taken a step. 31 tonight. Julius yeah, Randle's yeah. been pretty good lately. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's just like I'm watching the Nets Knicks play each other, and they just – they're just I don't know. I'm, I'm like – they're just a weird team. Like Evan Fournier can score, but he can't do anything else. No, he just Chris Dunn there. was cooking him tonight. Chris Dunn, nah, yeah, <laughs> former Fournier. number five pick in the draft. Chris Dunn yeah. the like, Knicks, who didn't know he was still in the NBA. <laughs> the Knicks have a lot of dead weight, and then they have a lot of young players. I thought mm -hmm. I was impressed with Sims. I thought he would. I thought he looked good. I thought it was yeah. interesting too. And I saw Knicks bitching, Nick fans bitching about it because they put uh, Tibbs put. In the net Nick game where Kevin Durant scored 53 points in the Nets one, uh, where they put in um why are you laughing? I have to because <laughs> he did. had to point out the exact points that they won. Oh, yeah. I mean so they did. So you know, I mean they like... did. I mean they did. And don't take don't forget, I've taken receipts on this shit. Like I've got Knicks fans tweeting me. It's good. The Nets fans are dead after they lost um the, you know the the game to the heat. It was they're like they're over, they're done. 
Uh, and when we've learned from, th- from that experience, there's just like, let's be, let's, let's be real. Kyrie gets vaccinated. They're not done. Or mayor Adams changes his mind. They're not done. Or Simmons That's- shows up. Simmons shows up. And then- <laughs> ah, Simmons is not. Don't I know. I know. I know. I'm with that shit. Simmons will but, be a yeah. nice bonus. But he's mm-hmm. not he's not game changing this stuff. I know, but that's, that's just the, wild to me. It's Kyrie still wild Irving, to me that you just Kyrie, totally just dismissed. <laughs> Kyrie <laughs> Irving is the one that's gonna is, is, of course Kyrie Irving playing is gonna change. What I'm saying anyway, is, I was like interrupting. Rewind. Myself. I sound like a <laughs> tangent, WFA tangent alert, house. tangent alert. Yes. Is that <laughs> um, I could see it happening where Taj Gibson came in for Sims and not in a certain like it was like third ish, fourth, I don't know, end of third quarter. It's I don't like, remember. Why now. is he in the fucking? And game? you're like. <laughs> What is going on here? And then, you know, pick and roll play with Sims. He's a lob threat. He can rebound. He can block shots. Um, you could see the frustration. I'm going like, my thought was, I'm glad they didn't put, I'm glad Taj Gibson's in this game. That was my thought. Yeah, for you. Yeah, no. And and Sims is a kid and he's learning. He had a couple bonehead plays tonight with the Blazers. He's got stone hands sometimes. He had one play where it was kind of like a kid in middle school where he steps onto the court before inbounding the ball, you know, after a basket, like he, he messed up like that. That was, that's embarrassing. And uh, you know, a couple things like that, but you know what Sims is going to learn. He's got the ability that's for damn sure, you know, athletic ability. And a couple, a couple of points from that article today from Jake Fisher on Bleacher Report, uh, a couple of things that I found interesting. Um, one is uh, whatever direction New York chooses, uh, where to go in whatever direction New York chooses, Thibodeau will have his share of influence on personnel. He was a driving factor behind signing Evan Fournier, sources say. So there goes that excuse that the people who who defend Tibbs and say, well, they gave him Evan Fournier. How do you expect him to do, to play defense with him? Well, this is a guy that he wanted, apparently, according to the story. So you can't pick and choose what parts of the story you want to believe. If you believe it, then you believe the story. So, you know. And then another thing that I wanted to hear your thoughts on, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Nick's governor. I don't know why they call him Nick's governor. Nick's Nick's governor, James Dolan, had granted the front office permission to either remove Thibodeau or retain him, sources said. But team president Leon Rose has no plans to make any change on the Knicks bench, sources said. Thibodeau maintains a frequent dialogue with Dolan following each game and often visits the owner's box. That's kind of it gives me Woody Johnson vibes with, uh, you know, when when the coach can direct report directly to the owner, not to the GM. And that that how that whole cluster fuck with the Jets, with Todd Bowles and McCagnin and all that stuff and how that didn't work out. And then with Adam Gase, the same deal. So I want to hear your thoughts as an outsider on that. Are you OK with the coach reporting directly to the owner and not having to talk report to, to Leon Rose? Maybe I'm reading too much into the quote, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a weird one, too, because Tom Thibodeau was so good in the first year. I mean, the Knicks were mm. bad, and then the, he came in, and the Knicks became a four seed, uh, which exceeded everybody's expectations, right. and everybody was hyped up. Hawk series happened. It was bad. And then from there, obviously, where we are now, the Knicks never really became a um, a team. I I don't think it matters. I mean, yes, it matters who the coach is for development, but at this point, like, it's all a front for what matters in the long run. I would be more. I'd be worried if it was too much of a connection to Tibbs, because at some point you have to make the break. You have to make the break when it makes sense. Now, has he helped in the, the, the development of RJ of, of RJ Barrett? Has he helped in the d- development of, um, you know, uh, Mitchell Robinson? Sure. Yeah. You but have to give credit point, for that. Yeah. You have to some to, so, make, to some extent. Yeah. At some yeah. point, you have to make the break. And I would be a little weary that that break doesn't come. Like, as much as it sucked to fire Kenny Atkinson, he wasn't the guy for the job. They had to make a switch. The Knicks can't be scared to hold on too long. And if they do, it could hinder them. This is a business, this is about the Knicks. The Knicks are about winning championships. Right. Ultimately, that's what matters. And if it's if they worry about hurting the feelings of Tom Thibodeau, that's a mistake. Now, if they think he's going to help the development long term, okay. But when there's a time to cut it off, you have to be okay with cutting it off. And to be fair, if you're Tom Thibodeau and they say we're cutting it off and you're going, okay, I've, I've now been cut off by the Bulls. I've been now cut off by the Timberwolves. I've now been cut it's off over. by the Knicks. Yeah. 
you've also made 50 fucking million dollars. You get over right. it fast. You go into your pool. You put up your feet. You eat your cheese. You drink your wine. And you go, I'm going to now do play by play with an ESPN announcer and talk about rotations for the Grizzlies versus the Suns and you live your life. Right, right. And you can't make your decision on the future of the franchise on a 64-year-old coach. You can't. You can't. You can't. And you can't. I don't care if he was, you know, the greatest coach of all time. You just can't. You know, they're they're getting to a point where somebody tweeted this out. I wish I can give them credit. I don't remember. But that you're getting they said they're you're getting to a point where RJ Barrett might have the decision on the next coach if he keeps developing in this direction, he keeps trending into an all-star next year if he's an all-star next year and then he doesn't like tibs goodbye <laughs> like, you know what i'm saying and you can even last year the knicks played great but there were also don't uh, we we got it we we have convenient memory uh, like uh convenient memory what's the maybe that's whatever fuck it we have convenient memory we forget things on purpose you know or just forget uh by accident that we tibs was not above blame last year uh with a lot of things that happened negatively he was stuck on alfred payton all season stuck 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 on alfred payton and he didn't take him out of the rotation until the middle of the playoff series where he panicked. He pulled him out of the rotation completely after being the starting point guard all year when he could have done that a month earlier and we could have had something. And now you're hearing the story from Jake Fisher that Thibodeau has a say on person now. So then it was on him that they got rid of Austin Rivers in the beginning of the season, just cut him and didn't get rid of like Theo Pinson or somebody else that has no bearing on the team. And then you're in the playoffs and Austin Rivers is not there. You can't turn to an actual point guard in the NBA who can come in. And you know what Austin Rivers does? He helps the Nuggets beat the Blazers in the first round of the playoffs by having two big games. And you know what he could have done for the Knicks? Help the Knicks win a game in the playoffs. Then maybe it's a different series versus Atlanta. Yeah, no, you know, I know good. Mitchell Robinson wasn't healthy, but whatever. That's a big deal. And if you're telling me that Thibodeau has that kind of has that kind of pull to make them sign Evan Fournier, then he had a lot of say about releasing a guy at the end of the bench like Austin Rivers at the time. Yeah, so no, Rivers played well. I mean, he's he's a, I mean, he hit shots. Yeah, he can hit shots. Yeah. It's just, it shots. Sucks. I mean, it's it weird sucks. to think he was a Nick that that feels like um, he won a game for them last ago. year before the crowd. He had he hit a couple big threes and won one one game early in the season. He can get hot. He's one of those guys. He's not a great player. He's not a Dude. starter, but he's a, he's a quality NBA player. And I remember that was one of those games where he hits these big threes. And I forgot how many he hit probably six or seven threes or something in that game. And there was nobody in the stands and they're like, oh, big shot. And they're all screaming. And then Clyde's like, it's so weird. The game's over and it's dead silent here. <laughs> There's nobody it's, here. It was that's so bizarre. It's so anyway. weird. Like where we are from last year to this year from both of these teams. Two years. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the Nets. Since well, the we'll start with lockdown. The yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll start with the Knicks. The Knicks. Last year at this point. So we played 70 ish games. That's how mm. many we played last year. The Knicks right. were going into this like, okay, we're playing the Hawks. We're hyped up. Here we go. This is we're going to sweep them. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, uh, you know, that. Nick fans, <laughs> we're going to win them five. Yeah. And Net Nets go into the series with the, with the uh, Celtics. Nets are the two seed. Celtics had no chance. They were hurt up. Um, and it was just like, you know, my neur neuroses, uh, I don't want to blow to the Celtics. Nets won them five. And now here we are a year later. The Knicks are not in the playoffs. They're five games back with 12 left. It's going to be a Herculean effort for them to make it back into the play. in mm -hmm. if anything, here are the Nets who are the eighth seed um, and a weird week where they look really good. Goran Dragic is awesome for them. I'll say that he has been a great addition. Uh, here's a team that teases you like, unbelievably teases you that when they are together, they can win. Um, and then when they don't have Kyrie, you realize their limitations and it's just from a year later to now, it's an unbelievable just spot to be in with everything that's happened. Uh, it's, it, I, I'll say at least for the Nets, the book's not closed. Mm -hmm. um, but man, what a year has been for these teams so different in so it's many ways crazy year in sports and it's crazy right now what we're going through after the, the baseball lockout we got the mets and yankees signing players you got baseball players going everywhere you got march madness starting football off season is like is it's crazy. i'm like mixing up players and teams like yeah. you know maybe, maybe the mets are in on julio jones now <laughs> or like you know did the yeah. jets trade blake cashman to like the astros you know things like that or you know like i'm just so confused like maybe the knicks can get into the sweet 16 you know some shit it's just like no. it's so confusing what's happening well, right now it's but it's great <laughs> what is no, it is great it's just, yeah uh, 
it's the epicenter of all sports coming together mm -hmm. and that's really cool it's cool and that's it been, is cool i think as a sports fan that's been fun to watch if you're jets giants nets knicks yankees mets devils rangers islanders i don't know as much about that Whoever. but uh, yeah, no, yeah. and it is cool with baseball. One real quick thing: how like the Mets can sign Mets uh, sign Chris Bassett or trade for trade for Bassett from the A's, and then like the next day he's reporting for spring training. It's like it's crazy. it's so cool. It's like you have to be there, you know. It's not like you know you make a trade in December. You're like, oh, I can't wait to see him in the uniform. It's like, oh, well, here he is. <laughs> you know, it's just it's it's crazy. Anyway, can I say something about net fans that are excited? That like, if anybody said this, um. No, you like, can't say it. Like, Spencer did what he hit it feel good for him. No, don't, don't feel good. Fuck for him. that. <laughs> no, nah, don't feel good for him. <laughs> no, fuck that. How about you know that this gets is, me this, mad and I, I'm laughing at that. This, that this is something. <laughs> oh, this is one thing. And maybe this is like I can't argue this, but I just thought that it was, was like, interesting. I, I, yeah. I have another thing I want to bring up. And, and it's yeah. it's it's bugging it's like Mets me. fans who are happy for the Nationals when they won the World Series. Like, no, fuck the Nationals. Okay, this <laughs> like, has know? been That's a lot of this has yeah. been bugging me, and and mm -hmm. I know the guy, and it's 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 kind of maddening me. So Nick Fidel is an NBA reporter for ESPN. Okay, do you know who he is? No, actually, you've probably know. seen him. Maybe I've seen him. On so Twitter, he yeah. he was the war the Warriors beat guy, okay. and now he moved to the Nets, and he was kind of saying how he doesn't understand. He was like, it's weird at Barclays Center. He's like, there's a lot of passionate net fans, but it's not as loud. He's like, it's weird. It like doesn't get loud and it takes this, whatever. Yeah. It's weirding me out because I went to college with him and I had classes with him. Oh, really? And I no, know him. <laughs> and it's just like all these net fans on Twitter are trashing him because they're like, hey, fuck you. We're a great fan base. He was and probably just Nick. asking a question. Like, I know Nick and he's just like doing his job. And uh -huh. it's just really weird to see because it bothers me in a lot of ways too that Barclays Center doesn't get as loud as it should. It's mm. like the weird thing about the Nets right now, Alex, is the Net fan that's really passionate about them is like serious hardcore Net fan. I know. I like know. serious. But the casual Net fan is not like the garden where you just know you go there and everybody is into it mm -hmm. so i think it's for like an outsider it's a weird combination where you see there's some people that really love the nets like right. deep deep love and then you got the casual people who just had nothing to like, do on a wednesday yeah, that wanted to go to the go game see the yeah. nets now yeah, there's yeah. five minutes left defense <laughs> defense and i think nick's learning that huh. yeah yeah that's cool we should get him on the show that'd be cool uh, I, no. I tried to invite him on once for my other podcast. He said he was busy. I won't try again. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, who but cares? Anyway. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Just, just the fandom thing still annoys me as a defensive mm. net fan. No, I, don't, I get I don't it. Like I get it. it. I get it. And I, I feel the same way about the Jets because the Jets have no home field advantage now. I mean, it doesn't help that they suck for the last decade, but like they have no, since they got into the new, new stadium, they, it's, been, fans, it's been horrible. Man. Just but there are, there are, the and like you know, I'm you know like, me with the season tickets, etc. Et People will et love the life. Jets. Yeah, you you have to be passionate about a team like that because how can you stay? How can you stay engaged? There were times this season I'm watching the Jets play, and I felt like I was doing it out of obligation and not because I wanted to watch them. You know, it's like oh, I gotta watch this fucking Jets. You know what I mean? Kind of a feeling. So, whatever, I, I get it. And now the now the stadium sucks, and and there's no fans. You go to a game, and it's all Bills fans, it's all Dolphins fans, it's all it's just. It's embarrassing and, and it gets me angry because I feel like the owner doesn't care, but it's not the same with the Nets where the owner does care yeah. and they have put the product on the floor. It's, it's just better. It's better. Yeah. It's better. So it's, yeah. That's who do you so, think, who do you yeah. think Alex wins the East? It, like, you like, can't answer that because you don't know what's do you, going on with the Nets. You know what I mean? Alex, it's so hard to I, answer I, that. I, I know. I know that. But if somebody yeah. said right now, gun to my Alex, head, who wins Alex, the East? like you had to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Who are you picking? Ask me the question. Go ask me a question. I'm like, hey, Alex, what's going on? <laughs> and welcome to Battle with the Fans. It's episode 706. We're doing an old school episode. We're bringing on one of the former hosts. Now, of course, <laughs> it's Mike Basegli alongside Bruce Brown. Let's bring in, Al <laughs> Let's bring in Alex Benezowitz. Bruce Brown. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Bruce Brown. I picked him up at Fantasy for today in the playoffs, by the way. Bruce so that was good. Who, uh, um, who do you think wins uh, East? I think... Gone to my head, I think the Heat win the East. Hmm. I think they're they're that good defensively, but I think the Bucks the Bucks can make noise. They're just sitting back and like not making a lot of you know not making a lot of noise. Use the same adjective. They're just they're just sitting back and just 
Like, all right, yeah, we're the Bucks, we're the tight, we're the champs. Uh, you know, I know, I know people don't think we should have beat the Nets, but you know what, we did, and then we we beat the the Suns, and you know, like, let, fuck off. Let me <laughs> like, ask, let me change, let me change yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Mayor Adams comes out tomorrow, changes the mandate. Kyrie's full time. Who do you think wins the East? See, I I don't know. I can't say guaranteed Nets still because. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't I wouldn't, know. Like, I wouldn't guarantee it either. I would, yeah, I'd be happy, but I'm just, I'm hard. just asking if somebody. It, watch it Well, it helps. It helps the fact, you know, this is not trolling. It helps the fact that Kyrie hasn't played all year because more times than not in the playoffs, he's been hurt in his career. The right. times that he hasn't been hurt and he, his body breaks down in the playoffs all the time. That's why the, the Cavs didn't win, win more than one title. They there there's no doubt in my mind. Well, they didn't win healthy. one more than one title because that warrior thing was they had yes, Durant. with the rant. Yeah, I but mean, before that, that before that, that first year, even when Kevin Love got hurt, Kyrie played that first game, remember? And he was he was dominating. He was also Curry. 21. Yeah, I, I know. I, I mean, know, but he got hurt, but he baby. kept getting hurt, but he kept getting hurt. That's the I, thing. I, I get you. I get it. Yeah. So and then even with the Celtics, he got hurt in the playoffs. And but the fact that he's played like 90 something games in three years for the Nets. And now he's been a part-time player just the second half of the season for the net for the Nets here. He's fresh. And if he's ready yeah. to go, he's going to be Kyrie Kyrie in the playoffs and not like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a little hurt or whatever. So right. I think it, they definitely can make a run. I mean, I, I don't want to say, but also it's Ben Simmons as, as well. I know you don't want to talk about him, but is that he's the What's other wild card. I mean, yeah, he's been the wild card the whole NBA season, but he might not be any kind of wild card at all. You know, it's kind of like Zion. Is he coming back? Is he not coming back? Who cares at this point? There's 10 games left in the season. You know, who gives yeah. a shit? You know, yeah, like, that's that, all. that helps yeah. me try to get over this like loss to the, the Mavs where Dim would hit the big three and yeah you know if the nets win if if dimwitty doesn't hit that shot my mind is in a different place Nets have won five straight games we're feeling good we're going to portland on friday right. i'm thinking we're gonna big you know, shot by was, durant let's go yeah right like, yeah. and it's just it's amazing the high and lows that it can get you and you got to try to remember like we recorded an episode 105 or something and it was after the nets lost to the wizards and at that point it was it wasn't that much of an emotional loss we had a great episode. We had a good back and forth, uh-huh. but you have to try to remember that loss versus Washington weighs as much as this does versus Dallas. The old, the good part is the Nets are in a much better place right now. Durant's back. They have clearly playing much better basketball. I mean, they're playing team basketball. It's in a better place. So it just, but it's just like the mentality of a fan to see the guy in Spencer Dinwiddie that you couldn't pay come back and hit the three. It is excruciating pain to Mm. see it. So as much as I want to get on you and I can come up with witty responses and I can, you know, out debate you, which I do to see you see that three go down. I could understand your joy from that. Yeah. And out of all the players, out, out of, of all, all the players. <laughs> and I will say, though, like. That sucked that Tim Hardaway Jr. Sucked. would have given me some satisfaction as well. If he hit the big three, not as much as Spencer. not as much because, as Dinwiddie. That was, too, it was poetic like justice in a way. You hate Dinwiddie. <laughs> you hate yeah. the Nets. And it was like you got to see that all come together in a big train wreck. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it happened. Um, Nets should never have oh, gotten yeah. to that point. Nick Claxton's defense has improved. Nets are missing a lot of guys, but that's the Nets. And you can't just, at some point, you got to say, that's just who they are. Just what it is, man. It's a safe space here, Mike. It's a safe space. I don't know. I don't know how. I could see this season ending for the, for the Nets, Alex. In seventeen different ways. Oh yeah, there's there's I could nobody see knows them, anything. It's the, I could see them being in the, the play-in great unknown. And lose. <laughs> it's the I great could unknown. See, yeah. I could see them being like, yeah, they're in the play in. They lose. Trey Young mm-hmm. scores sixty six, and the Nets. I could see that. Right. I could see the Nets winning. Kyrie Irving becomes a full time player, and they run the East. It, it's it's it. It's and the Knicks the have full, two two options. They're either toast the full, or they might back into the play in, and that's it. And then they lose in the play in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only, that's the only I mean, options. It would be hard yeah. for the Knicks to get into the playoffs. Yeah, they would have to win out. Yes, for yeah. sure. Or maybe not win out, but and, pretty much win eight of twelve. You know, which on, is not happening. I'm yeah. on the record of being like, oh, yeah. I don't. You know, I'm upset with people that say I don't want to be the team that plays the Nets. But to be fair, mm-hmm. if you're the Heat and you won 55 games and you're the one seed, and all of a sudden you're like, 
would you rather see the Hornets or the Nets? I mean, just being logical, mm. you don't want to see yeah. Kyrie and Durant. No, you want to see Lamelo. No, yeah. <laughs> you know, you so. see Lamelo, and you're like, oh, they're an upstart team. Bridges, they game, but dunking you, on you, yeah, right, whatever. You don't, yeah, want to like, see, <laughs> you don't want to deal with Kevin Durant in the playoffs. No, but the, but yeah, but the if the, the Heat and the uh, and the Bucks will look at the the Hornets and be like, all right, we got you. You know, like uh, they're they're gonna go into that series confident. The Bulls are, are wild card as well with their health and and everything, so you never know. So. And the Celtics they're the team that really basketball. doesn't want to face the Nets in the first round. <laughs> Celtics know? have been great. The whole the Celtics have been. The East is wide open. Mm -hmm. the yeah, no, really it is. Wide open. And they're better there than is... the West this year, man. The Knicks would be in the like or in or just out of the playoff play-in tournament if they were in the West this year, which is crazy. It's it's well, it's, it's the flipped. West is terrible. Yeah, it's flipped, man. And and the Knicks are twenty nine and forty, and it, the West is the West has dropped dramatically and rem i'm so glad that they didn't do the reseeding of like have the whole oh, the whole yeah. uh, that would it's so stupid you got to have some kind of uh, situation maybe you can reconference and maybe have the the pelicans who are in new orleans not be in the west <laughs> you know what i mean that that's which it doesn't make any sense but so, other than that you know whatever so let mm -hmm. me say this i'm going to go through the eastern conference teams and then yeah. i'll do the western conference teams and then you we got to get to our interview and yes, then you tell me yeah. if you think they can win a championship mm -hmm. the okay. heat yes the bucks of course. The Sixers. Yes. The Bulls. No, because of health, I'll say. Celtics. No. I like the Celtics more than the Sixers or Bulls. I'll disagree on that. Cavs. I don't because Harden's the wild card there. Because that's hard, you know, because if he turns it on and, and, and plays like Harden for once, he can win a title. The Cavs. You know? No. Raptors. No. Eight seed Nets. Yes. Do you want me to go Hornets through the rest? No, the, okay. no, no, no. Okay, so you got Heat, Bucks, Sixers, um, Net. So that's four. Mm -hmm. Now let me go to the West. Suns. Yes, of course. The Grizzlies. They're the best team out of, and nobody talks about the Suns. They're the, by far the best team in the NBA. <laughs> nobody talks about it, and they were in the finals last year. It's incredible. Okay, go ahead. Next. Grizzlies. Grizzlies, no. The Warriors. Yes. The Mavs. No. Jazz. No. Nuggets. No. I won't Nuggets, maybe. It depends. If Jamal Murray comes back, maybe. You know, but and with Jokic, you know, so you maybe. He wolves, yeah. Clippers, <laughs> Lakers, Pelicans. No. Lakers, yeah. you never know because they have LeBron. So you never know what kind of run they can go on, even though he's 100 years old, but he's still incredible. So you never know with the Lakers. So Lakers, I'll say a maybe. But the rest, no. So, yeah, the East is better, man. The East is a better is, is better this year. It's just it's what it is. You know? Yeah, the East is going to be a bloodbath. Dude, second round, I mean, it's just going to be it's going to be nasty. Yeah, it oh, is. It is. All right. Be ready to get to our interview. We got an interview right now with our with our boy who does the my boy, Kenny, Kenny Troon, Kenny Troon Music on Instagram. He did our opening song. If you guys heard it, Bad Weather Fans is the Relation. And uh, we did a great interview with him. He came on. He's a big Nick fan. And uh, you had anything to say before we go to it, Mike? Uh, I just don't like talking to Nick fans, but I'll do this for you. Okay. Well, hope you guys enjoy. All right. As promised, we have our guest, Kenny Troon. You know him from our intro on Bad Weather Fans. You know, uh, uh, Bad Weather Fans is the relation. And he's part of the relation of right. Bad Weather Fans. Kenny, how's it going? It's going great. Got my dog Luke here too. You see it right here? Uh, there we go. Oh, beautiful, great dog. <laughs> yeah, we chilling. We feeling good with rare blowout win tonight for us. So you know, I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tough night for Mike, but we'll we'll get to that. We were just talking about that. Well, but, you know, uh, sports sucks. Sports sucks. I mean, it just it, it just it just happens. <laughs> I mean, you know, you get fucked in the face. What do you want? What do you want me to tell you? Perpetual misery, misery until one day you might be happy. You know, yeah, you no, gotta love it. there's so many stories that happened tonight that I'm so happy about, and it pertains to Mike's uh, loss. But we'll get to you, that. Wait, wait, wait. Time, time out, Brooklyn. Do you have a cat behind you? Yeah, Uno. Uno. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love dogs. Love Mike. Dogs yeah, are Mike great. But hold on, you, now hold on. Right, right. He's gonna show you his cat. Leon, this is Leon, and he's Leon. my cat. And Leon, oh, love you, Leon. We're on YouTube, guys. Also, if you're listening, so just so you know, see all the video. <laughs> Bad weather fans yeah, on YouTube. You're gonna, you're gonna come out. on and promote your dog and not your cat. Like, honestly, uh, of all the shit you're gonna talk tonight about, the Nets lost. Spencer Dinwiddie hit the shot. Everybody remember he was on the Nets. Yeah, we know. 
but you're going to come on here and not show me that you've got a cat first. Now I'm pissed. Dude, do you see how my cat just slid in and out? Like that's I have an cats. Album, I have an yeah. album called Uno. That's about my cat. And yes. that's just like, he's just doing his promo run. You know what I'm saying? I love that. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to all the cats out there. That's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm a cat guy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, so first of all, you know, thank you so much for the intro that you've done for this podcast. Uh, I you know, people are always chanting it and saying it. It's been awesome. <laughs> uh so thank you for that where did the inspiration come be you know to to think of the open to think of the idea and you know based on the podcast that we have how did how did you even think of the concept so you know from the bottom of both of our hearts thank you uh and where did that kind of come from i mean i guess when when alex hit me up i was like okay we're talking mix and like that just got me geeked up right away and you know, I know Alex for a while, so when Alex reaches out, wants to do some music stuff with me, I'm I'm always down for that. So yeah. as, as for the beat, I actually made the beat a little before, like he asked me, and I'd done a rap song with it, and then I just heard it, and I heard that intro. I was like, dude, this is perfect. I can I could definitely, and I kind of didn't write it. I put on the mic and did it like line by line. And I kind of just felt it out, like how I would envision you guys, like both Knicks and uh, Nets fans going at it and talking about sports and shit. So that's great. Uh, Yeah, because because I think I gave you the vibe. You said, what kind of vibe are you looking for? And I was like, the big pun, it's so hard vibe. You know, that song we talked about using that intro, but we didn't want to get sued. Because we're passionate (laughs) about New York. That's why we we come off. You know, I mean, we want we want to talk about it, yell about it. So That's great. Oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. So you got an album coming out. What's what's the album called? Where you can where can you get it and everything like that? Yeah, it's gonna be on all digital platforms. It's called Mangosteen. Mm-hmm. Uh M-A-N-G-O-S-T-E-E-N. It's like the fruit. Uh it's uh it's a pretty great album. I consider it like the ELO album I've always wanted to make. Are mm-hmm. you familiar with Jeff Lynn and Electric Light Orchestra? Yes. Absolutely not. I'm not yeah. absolutely so, not. like <laughs> that's i feel like i got well, the brothers Ni- yeah. brothers nylon to play strings on every song so oh that's cool it's like it's real or- real instruments in the background not like-, it's like i've always wanted to make it's like pretty sick so it's I'm like excited. an unplugged vibe kind no, of that, that's cool because alex it's, it's gives- a little rock and it's a little Sorry, Mike. yeah it's it's okay. good alex always gives me shit because i like all kinds of music i don't care what the genre is i'm like if it's good it's good i'm into it so when yeah. he says, yeah, do I know that? Of course I don't. And I'm like, of course Alex does it. But that's that's dope. But I'm excited to hear that because that's the vibe I'm going for. I love that sound. It's so it, yeah. it's so great. So that's super cool and super exciting. Yeah. Like, you know, disappointing again with the Knicks background. But other, other, other than that, I think we could be friends. Yes, I think we could be. I, I'm actually a net, uh, old school Nets fan when they were in Jersey. Mm-hmm. So I do have love for... Uh, Kerry Kittles used to have the one sock pulled up. He did. Keith Van Horn used to have both high socks. Like, they're the reasons why I always balled with high socks, even though I'm a Knicks fan. Yes. So See, Nets, Nets influencing culture in the city <laughs> of New York in the early 2000s because nothing said. No, it's true, though. Kerry had the one sock. KVH yeah. had the two socks. My AOL screen name was Socks 44 when I was a kid. <laughs> That's see, there you go. You understand the lingo right there. Plus, I you see the pistol jerseys. Pistol used to wear floppy ass socks. Nice. Mm, so like jersey in the background, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. No, it, me and Kenny go way back, probably to about two thousand four, right? I think when we, when we yeah first at a beach club at a beach club in Atlantic Beach, Silver Point. Shout yep. out Silver Point. Uh, me and him have a lot of stories, some run-ins with cops that we shouldn't talk about on the air, <laughs> stuff like that. Like <laughs> a lot of crazy my stories. Only, my we, <laughs> my we only ACOD that. ever. Your only what? My only what ACOD ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let, that's for uh, post production, Mike. Post production <laughs> story. <laughs> no, I'm, ed- I'm actually going to, after this, I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to put it to the front of the interview and I'm going to put it on a loop just at <laughs> time after time after time. And then I'll insert a couple things. Maybe I'll insert in the middle, like the Knicks suck. The Knicks suck. Yeah. Fire tips, fire tips. You know, maybe I'll put that in there. We'll see. We'll see what that's happens in post production. We'll, we'll see we'll see what kind of mood i'm in because the nets lost so good <laughs> yeah so what are your thoughts on uh the knicks this year and the, the nets and everything like that i know you're a big fan so i mean Let's knicks are hard to watch especially without d rose that was like the worst to me him going out and then it's just like seeing it just randall's just 
he's never wrong and he's always arguing all game. And I, and that it carries over into the, the energy of the team. Right. And it's been really hard to like, like watch that. Um, I don't know, man. Tonight was, was like, Oh yeah, we blew out a Portland team. It was just kind of like completely rebuilt. Decimated. Yeah. Yeah. It's just <laughs> like, a t- you know, we win and we were winning a lot because Randall was facilitating more. And I feel like when he, passes more instead of trying to be the point guy and iso ball like we're that means we're moving the ball around like every time it gets to him and he's doing this like bull in the china shop thing mm-hmm. like it works to an extent you know what i mean but well, I the blazers, i'll just be the blazers suck i mean they, they do blazers, i mean i mean i was on their team nothing. earlier in the year and i had a 10-day <laughs> contract and i got cut i mean they're not very good was simon's even playing no I don't think yeah. so. I didn't their best player. <laughs> it was just like completely. Yeah, I, for, I forgot that they had Chris Dunn was playing big minutes, and I haven't yeah, seen Chris Dunn yeah. in, <laughs> in forever. I'm like, he's still in the league. I got I'm just happy because the Nets have yeah. him Friday. I'm like, all right, yeah. Nets have him Friday. You, you know, Kyrie can't play in home games, so That's I'm just true. excited. Like, all right, yeah. after that devastating loss, they're gonna win by seventy. At least the Portland Trailblazers <laughs> coming Friday. You know, I, you know. Just yeah, for, you have a layup. Happy yeah. ending at this point from that. Yeah, you guys, you guys need to bounce back from that one. Yeah, that sucks. We we need to bounce back from this whole season. I'm I'm like kind of upset about it. Are we even in the play-in? We're not, right? No, they're like five or six games. I don't even know anymore. They're yeah. they're they're not the worst, but they're not they're not in the play-in. So they're just in complete purgatory. They're 29 and 40 now, I believe. And they were 10 games over 500 last year, but some, for some reason they're keeping the coach. So what are your thoughts on that? The source, the story today that they're, they're bringing Tibbs back next year. And then Kenny Payne is gone the day later or a couple hours, I, a couple hours I, later. I should say. <laughs> I love Tibbs. I really do. Mm-hmm. But I, I always wanted Mark Jackson or Van Gundy to come back. Like yeah. I really did. Mm-hmm. Like Van Gundy brought us there in 99. Yeah, I think he's just done. I think he's just done. I, I don't think you know. Yeah, interest. Van yeah. Gundy. You can yeah. tell he's like sick with the like with the moves that the Knicks do and like. Yeah. But I did want Mark Jackson, man, because he's good with young, you know, young stars and or the seeds rather. And he turns them into stars. You know what I mean? And he's a Nick. He's a New York guy. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who else are you gonna get if we get rid of Tibbs? Well, that, that's a great that's a great point. Like, you know, who else are you going to get? I do think Tibbs has done a good job with the development. The best part of the next season right now is the development of R.J. Barrett. He's played a lot better. Mitchell's improved. So there are there are some positives that you can take mm. from the next season. I mean, I mean, they're not good. They're not a playoff no. team. They're not a team that's going to scare anybody. Uh, but there are some positives you can take from that. And, you know, if I if I was a Knicks fan, I, I'm not. I would say, yes, it was a lost season because you had expectations last year being the four seed. You're feeling mm-hmm. good. You went into a playoff series. Things didn't go your way. But ultimately, long run, you know, you want to make sure you have a, a, R.J. Barrett taking development developmental leaps to me would be more exciting than, let's say, you go and lose to the Bucks in five. Mm. That's true. That's true. Net fan, net fan speaking Nick knowledge. I just yeah, it's just like ah, whatever. Man, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny, tell us more about the album again. Remind us when when it's coming out and the name and everything and spell it out. Mango something, right? I, I forgot. Yeah, it's, Sorry. It's, it's Mangosteen, and Mango, it's going to be on Spotify, YouTube, title, nice. all the digital streaming places, and uh, it's under my name, Kenny Trune, T R U H N. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can follow me on instagram uh at kenny true music and uh i have a link tree there with all the projects i do i do hip-hop rock metal all types of stuff i just did i just started a new web series called let's make some shit and it's uh it's all about the creative process and collaborating with different people behind the scenes and just making stuff so it's really cool that dropped on my youtube channel you can follow me there um yeah, but it comes out April first. Uh, April first. Yeah. Cool. April Fool's Day, and you can get April it. Fool's Day. Yeah. No, but it, yeah, is it dropping? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. No, All right. So, so, so. Oh, wait, go ahead. You had something else? Do you want to say? That? No, say? no, no. I was gonna say, you want to go ahead and drop the uh, the live version of our intro for us real quick before we sign out on this. Yeah, uh... sure. Uh, you want? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do it with a 
little help with this guy. With the guitar? Live, yeah. Yeah. unplugged yeah. version of the Bad Weather Fans intro. Let's go. Hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple bad weather fans represent New York. Talking all things sports, man, what could go wrong? We got Alex, who's a fan of the Knicks, and Mike of the Nets. The yin yang of the tri state place your bets on the Yankees, Giants, Mets, and Jets. Yeah, you should listen if it's sparking your interest. If you made a vow to your team, don't break it. Bad weather fans is not relation. All right, man. You you picked up my night. I'm not gonna lie. I was at, that that was you made me smile. That was awesome. Thank you. That was that was great. That was that's great. The, it's the rock version of it or acoustic, yeah. whatever the you acoustic want. Acoustic unplug great. something there. <laughs> yeah comedians we shift genres we do whatever the hell we want <laughs> yeah pretty very talented man that always has been always have been thanks right. for uh coming on really appreciate it kenny we got to do this again sometime and maybe meet up in person <laughs> some absolutely <point. laughs> Let's do it, come to a show <laughs> yeah yeah definitely 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 yeah, yeah thank you all right bad weather fans of the relation 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 thank you again that was an awesome interview check out the yeah. album information we're giving it to you in the show notes Please check it out. We appreciate all the support. Um, it's stuff like that that goes a long way. Enjoyed that. Thank you again. All right, Alex, yeah. we got two things to get to before we wrap this bad boy up. We've got the poll question, and then we've got the trivia, which I've been a disaster on lately. I've been on so. fire on Dolan J. Trump's trivia on fire. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that. I got to be honest. You I'm should walking be. around my head uh, held he's, high. He's a good. He's he's a diehard Nick fan. Uh, one of the best Nick fans I know. <laughs> So, I mean, this guy knows his Knicks. I He's remember president. President. I remember him when he was younger. We were, we've been friends forever. And he would oh, yeah? rock. We would, yeah. Oh, God. He wore an Anthony Mason jersey. That was this guy. <laughs> All right. Ready? At Nick Central, Nick's poll question every week. All right. Knicks fans, even after the report today about Tibbs, uh, if the Knicks at 28 and 40, now 29 and 40, continue to bottom out during the last 12 games and finish like, 32 and 50 does Tibbs still get fired does Tibbs get fired yes or no 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 one 72.9 percent yes 27.1 percent I should have phrased it as should <clears throat> should Tibbs get fired excuse me I love when you're and, always like I should have phrased it I said I should have phrased it as should but does Tibbs get fired is more what I wanted to know is like will Dolan change his mind if the Knicks, like, let's say the Knicks, I know they're not going to lose the next 12 games. So let's say they lose the next 11 games and they finish uh, 29 and 51 yes. after going 10 games over 500 last year. How do you keep the damn coach, man? Like, I just well, don't understand. Haven't gone there yet, so don't, don't, you know, they haven't done that yet. I you know, but this, this guy, Jake Fisher, he's a good reporter. Like, I actually was looking up some of his stuff. I Like, I searched his profile source. So I want to be like, oh, this is the same guy who said this. And I, I couldn't find anything. You know, maybe he deleted some things that he messed up, but he was he's on the money, man. I, you know, give props to him with a lot of things. All right. So I'll give uh, two shout outs. How about that? Just so we can get to get going. This is a long one. Yeah. So we have our boy Bobby B at Rude Boy NYK. I want to move on and get a more modern coach. But realistically, it ain't happening. I don't even know if bottoming out will be enough. Shaking my damn head. Yeah. Shake it all day, Bobby. <laughs> Stop tweeting me see uh we have jason star he's at jason star books he's uh you know famous guy he goes they will go 12 and 0 so he's one down so they might go 12 and 0 jason star mm. yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet and then we have you, you want to bet on that we can bet on that if you want i'll take the bet uh let's see uh, we have our boys at the New York Knicks podcast at NY Knicks podcast he goes, I want to see what Tibbs looks like if this team has an actual starting level point guard before he gets fired Okay. You know, I love those guys, though. I'm not going to trash them. New York Knicks podcast. You listen to it. Mike was on the show once. Uh, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I don't think the Knicks have had a point guard, you know, since I was seven. 
I don't even know if they had one then. I mean, the, the last point guard was Mark Jackson first time around. You know, they had Rod Strickland and Mark Mark Jackson, and they traded Rod Strickland for Mark to, so Mark Jackson can play, and then they traded Mark Jackson for Charles Smith I think, and, and I think Doc this Rivers. Whole, like, <laughs> it's yeah, just like yeah, that was it. I, I think this whole like <laughs> of the Knicks had a point guard narrative is just like an easy way exactly to, to go into your thing. Like, there's teams that win championships that don't mm-hmm. have point guards. Right. You don't have to have a point guard to win a title. Chauncey Lakers, Billups, Blazers coach, won a title. He wasn't a pure point guard at the time. That was on talent. The Knicks don't have enough yeah, talent. Exactly. That's what the Knicks problem. Here, here's the problem with the Knicks. They don't have enough good players. And the coach stinks. I'm sorry. He stinks. You know, now. He just you know, is, is too right. stubborn. And, and that's that's the perfect storm of shit this year. And, 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 every, and everybody can be excited about the Knicks. Like, oh, we got this guy. We got that guy here. I'll put a wet blanket on you because I'm in a bad mood. You're not winning games, you know? Your team sucks. Uh, yeah, RJ Barrett's this. Mitchell Robinson's this. Okay, then why don't you win? If these guys are that good, why do you keep losing? Tell me that. Yeah, man. That's the same reason why the Nets are the eighth seed. You know, that's just what happens. You know? Yes, the Nets are the eighth seed because they have, don't have good players. No, the, the Nets are the eighth seed because because somebody wants I just want to, to remind you that the somebody wants to take a rod and smack me over my goddamn head. Over, over, over. Honestly, again. the Knicks and the Nets records in 2022 are not that far off together because no. the Nets lost like those 14 in a row or whatever that was. The Nets were the one <laughs> seed. And they dropped to the six, the 602 seed. Yeah, the eighth seed. Like baseball. No, but it, I looked it up a couple weeks ago and it was the Knicks actually had a better winning percentage than the Nets two weeks ago in 20, 2022, which is wild to think about. And the Nets, I mean, they've been winning some games lately, but. They've won Excuse four me. of five, and in that yeah. path, they beat the Nets and or they beat the Knicks. And I'll say this, just a bit. Yeah, this is this is that that was Durant to Fournier. Oh, to Fournier, Small. yeah. Well, he couldn't do that to Mitchell Robinson, who blocked this shit. So that's a- yeah, that was <laughs> that was an impressive dunk. That was no, impressive. no joke aside. Like, but, but you understand to, that yeah. to be fair. Like <laughs> when when people have to make a point, like see this, this was amazing. Mm-hmm. If somebody blocks Kevin Durant on the perimeter. And it becomes a story. There's yes. a reason for that, right? It's not because of how good Mitchell Robinson was. It's because somebody did it to Durant, right? It's like if somebody had blocked Kareem's hook shot. I'm sure it yes. happened once or twice in his career, but it was like the unblockable shot. <laughs> yeah, it's like whoa, he blocked the shot. Yeah, I can't wait for Mitchell Robinson to sign with the Mavs. That's gonna <sighs> be so nice. Damn, bro. And then be like, me. Eh, well, we got 48 for under contract. He's going to sign with the Nets, and somehow the Nets are going to get him. It's no, just, they it's don't just have the money happen. to sign Mitchell. Robinson. I know, but just somehow it's it's just going to happen. No, they'll, it's get gonna Don- happen. they'll get Donovan Mitchell in the trade. That'll oh, happen. My God, imagine I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to flip Ben point, Simmons. This, they're going to flip Ben Simmons at this for, point, for Mitchell. Yeah. At this point, if, if you're if you're a Nick fan and you doubt that that something like that could happen, no, I don't doubt. Don't, After the Harden trade, I don't doubt anything. I mean, like the Nets could make that like. Donovan Mitchell will go. I can I can pair up with Kyrie and Durant. Of the, I want to go here. Don't yeah. You you. And he's a Mets change. fan. He's a Mets fan, and we we all assume because he's a Mets fan that he's going to want to play for the Knicks. But the Nets are Different in New world. York too. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm, like, and, I'm not, and I'm not. He's from Westchester. He, I'm not no, saying that he would not want to yeah. be a Nick. But at this point, uh-huh. you can't have the mentality like, oh, that's not impossible. No, it's it's no, clearly it's, an opportunity. Listen. The the. the the Nets are a, a force in that front. They are. They just are. They are. All right. Ready for jersey number trivia? Yeah. It's enough shout outs. Uh, I'll ask you first. So jersey number trivia, Dolan underscore at underscore what? Okay. At Dolan underscore J underscore Trump. He sells merchandise. I don't know if you've heard of him. Dolan J. Trump. He gives us a jersey number, Nick's in the Nets one, and we gives us clues, and one of us, we have to guess them. So go ahead. You want to give me the Knicks one first? Then let's go. He wore number five during his three seasons with the Knicks, 2009-2012. Number five. For three years? Mm-hmm. Number five. I'm going to say Baron Davis. No, he no. was 81 or 85 or whatever when he was there. Okay, next. I don't know. During his tenure, he appeared in 120 games and made 22 starts at the SG slash SF position. Averaging Aaron a follow? Career... No. Averaging a career best 12 PPG in 2009. So nine through when? 09 through 11, he said? Uh, 2009 12. to 2012. Mm-hmm. Wow. His career fizzled out after five years after being drafted in the second round in the 2008 draft by the Wizards. 
So Wizards. That's the only team he I've gives never me. Heard, I've never heard of this guy. And he started 22 games for the Knicks and never heard of him? That's crazy. I've never heard of him. Maybe number five on me. Okay. Maybe Shooting guard number maybe five played on the team for four years. And I don't know who he is. He played for the different. Celtics, Knicks, and Heat. Celtics, Knicks, Celtics, Knicks, and Heat. This is a weird. I don't even know what he did here. This might be Celtics, make believe. It's a fake one. Maybe it's a fake one. He attended Celtics, Kansas Knicks, State Heat. University and was acquired by the Knicks and deals that involved Eddie House. That's all you got. Inquired, acquired in a deal that they got Eddie House or that it's involved. Ugh, that's so vague, man. He's he's really going after. Yeah, he life. he's coming for me because I've been getting I've been on fire. I got at least he five in a row to drink soda. He's yes. Like, okay, so let's go. Let's recap. In the 2009 2012 number five started 22 games. And did it say in one year he started 22 games or was it overall he started 22 during games? his ten year he appeared in 122 game 120 games. Made 22 starts. Um, oh, in his whole career, he made 22 starts. During his tenure. Knicks. So I guess with the Knicks, he oh, made tenure, 120 not 10 years. games okay. and made 22 starts. Averaging a career best 12 points per game in 2009. He likes the number. 2005. I mean, 2009, number five. Why should I, I should know this? If he's on the team throughout those mellow years, I should fucking know this. What? What is that? It's a weird one. Is there any more quite any more hints? So that's it. No, that's oh, it. he's coming for me. That's tough. Um, uh, shot in the dark. Clee Anthony early. No, nope. I don't know. Bill, aka Henry. Bill Walker. Walker. Oh, fuck, Billy Walker. He changed his name to Henry Walker after he left the next. Fuck. No fuck. Clue. Never even heard of him. Oh man, he was good actually. He can slam it home, man. He was actually a pretty good player. I remember they were laughing though when when LeBron was coming, you know, 2010 when LeBron when they were trying to get LeBron and whatever, and they're like, LeBron. Somebody made a joke. I forgot who it was. It's like LeBron goes into this meeting with Riley and throws the rings on the table, and he can team up with Wade and Bosh or Romari, whoever. At the time, and it's like then he goes to the Knicks thing, and Donnie Walsh was in a wheelchair, and he's like they're selling him on Billy Walker. You know what I mean? It was just like kind of like, you know, I, it was funny, funny story. Fuck. I'm so mad I didn't get that. I should have known that one. Do you that ever get one. um do you ever get spam Twitter? Spam Twitter? Like, like just like you know, it's a spam account that DMs you. Oh, DMs, yeah, yeah, all the time. So I got one I, from Jennifer. <laughs> um, it's Casey at Casey E E Y E E Y Y. And she's just hey. like in this bunny suit. It's clearly like a spam sex thing. She uh-huh. friended me and she wrote, how are you? I said, I'm awful. The Nets just lost. She said, can I be your friend? I said, no, I'm depressed. Did you see that Dinwiddie <laughs> shot? Let's see what she says. So you're actually responding. To I'm it. responding. I'm like, yeah. She's I'm trying curious. to catfish you and you're actually. Yeah, and I'm like, no, I don't want to be back. your friend. Yeah, exactly. So I'm curious <laughs> what you respond to. What do they call that? A catfishing a catfish? Do they call that anything? I don't know. Depression. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yeah. This one you should get. I'm going to put That's the pressure what on. That's what Dolan said. He said, good luck. You with should. Jersey. Trivia.u, which became a hyperlink, should you should get it. <laughs> okay. He wore number 21 during the 2010 2011 season, his only year in New Jersey. Um, I was going to say Ben Simmons, but it's not him, but it sounds similar to that. No. Um, okay. His career lasted 11 years after being selected in the first round in the 2003 draft. Coming out of high school. The Stro? No, 2003. Nope. No, okay. He played for four different teams during his career, including the Nets, Clippers, Blazers, and Sacra Tomato. Darius Miles. Nope. Okay. With the Nets, he started 55 of 82 games at forward and averaged just under 10 points per game. He, he didn't go to his college. He didn't give me that. Who, no who college. Oh, yeah, no him? college. I went to high school. Who drafted him? Doesn't say. It says he played for the Nets, Clippers, Blazers, and Kings. Yeah. And his best seasons took place in Portland. So he's known for being a Blazer. Yeah. I don't know. I'm done with Jersey trivia. 
Give it 10 that's seconds. All I get. Give it, yeah, that's it. Give it 10 right. seconds. Go, run through them one more time. Okay. He wore number 21 during the 2010 2011 season, his only year in New Jersey. His career lasted 11 years after being selected in the first round in the 2003 draft via high school. I'll, I'll turn my Joe announcer voice on now. Ready? He played for four different teams during his career, including the Nets, Clippers, Blazers, and Sacramento. With the Nets, he started 55 of the 82 games at forward and averaged just under 10 points per game. His best seasons took place in Portland. Okay, so he's drafted. Mike, your Portland. answer is 2003 at a high school. That's not many clues. No, he's 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 trying to get us. I, sh- I mean, I should get because I'll know who it is, but like. I don't want to waste the audience's time. Who is it? Travis Outlaw. Yeah, that's a good one. So those are the types of free agent signings that you used to sign <laughs> yeah. compared to the guys now that you sign. Right. That that was, I remember that was always the joke. It's like, you know, the, the Heat got everybody, the Knicks got Amari at least, and then the Nets were like, yeah, well, we got Travis Outlaw. <laughs> Help Didn't you tonight. amnesty him? Didn't you amnesty him too or something? I think, uh, right? Maybe. I don't remember. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just interested in what Jennifer has to say about this Nets. Loss. Yeah, and Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't know if you remember Dinwiddie hit a game-winning three tonight. Just so you remember, oh. I don't know if you know. It's a weird feeling when a a, a um, shot like that goes in because you just sit there and there's just nothing you can do. And like the net player smiled, and you just tip your cap, man. Yeah, it's just like wow, and it's kind of like when RJ Barrett hit that three versus Celtics, that they're probably like, are you, the Celtics players are probably like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like one of those like a running sliding three off the Move backboard. On. You're just like, fuck man. All right, man, you got Move us. <laughs> like, you know, it's just, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, no, that was all sucks. skill by RJ Barrett. All skill. He meant to do that completely. I wanted that one, man. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. Well, it's a five game winning streak and you're going mm-hmm. to Portland. I mean, it's just, and then you're going to, you're going to be Portland. It's, then trust well, me, you you're just... going to beat them. Yeah. It just it brings you back. It centers you to the yeah. bigger thing at hand. Will right. Kyrie Irving be a full time player again? I can't. Who cares about Ben Simmons? He's not there. See, that's that's it's still crazy. We can do How a whole episode crazy? on Ben Simmons because you just traded James freaking Harden for this guy, and you just yeah, but, don't give but, a shit about him. But that's Drummond crazy and Seth to me. Curry add enough. Alex, I'm telling you right now. But ben Simmons is you, you, you don't care feeling, about German and Seth Curry. You know my feelings. You know my feelings, We're gonna get on, into you know my feelings <laughs> on 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 Kyrie. I think he's that good. No, I get I've it. always Harden, said this. And, no, and, and I think and, Kyrie yeah. is the like he mm-hmm. him and Durant together give you a shot. And now Drummond gives them rebounding. They got flexibility with, with Claxton on defense. It gives I love Drummond, shot. man. I do. I love Drummond. Yeah, I've always pro- defended Drummond and tonight. saying he's a specialized weapon. You got to use him the right way and don't expect too much out of him. He didn't get that's what the Nets are doing. The he didn't get yeah. minutes tonight because they kept picking, rolling him to death with Luca. Mm. He was cheering well on the, on the, on the bench, though, after yeah. the Durant three. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Well, fuck, fuckity, fuck. I just. Good show. We should name uh, that the episode that. Fuck, yeah. fuckity, fuck. Fuckity, fuck. All right. It's been Bad Weather Fans, episode 108. Yep. Uh, Knicks winners versus the Blazers. Nets Yay. losers versus the Dinwiddie Mavs. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we continue to roll along. Thank you again because Bad Weather fans, it's the relations, Alex. Kenny Troon, thank you, Kenny, for coming on. Appreciate it. Love the open. Uh, check us out on YouTube. And uh, Alex, I'll see you later. I'm in a bad mood.